Hi everybody, this is Stephanie from the Pasadena Public Library. I'm going to show you how to make a drawstring bag and this particular bag has enclosed seams so you don't have any raw edges on the inside of your bag. So hopefully by doing this project you'll learn a couple of different ways of enclosing your seams. So let's just go over the tools that you'll need for this project. You'll need your fabric scissors and pins and about uh, one fat quarter of fabric. I purchased half a yard here and I'm going to be able to make two bags out of it. I've already cut one out over here as you can see. Um, I also have some ribbon. You'll also want something to mark your fabric with, so some pencil or chalk. And then you'll also need a ruler. So let's start by cutting out our fabric. And for this project, you could use any size rectangle to make your bag. I am just gonna use a plain sheet of copy paper as my pattern piece. But you, of course, could use a larger piece or a smaller piece if you'd like to change the size of your bag. So I'm just gonna pin this to my fabric and I'm gonna cut out two of these so my fabric is folded in half here. So now you'll need a ruler and some chalk. So I am going to mark one and a half inches down from the top. So remember if your fabric has a direction that you have the top up here. And I'm just going to mark 1.5 inches down there on both sides of the top here. Now you just want to pin your fabrics together, right sides together, and pin all along the sides. And for now we're just going to be sewing the side seams, not the bottom or the top. Now I am going to stitch this over at the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch it at 5 eighths of an inch all the way along this side, stopping where we made that mark. So this top one and a half inch section here will not be sewn on either side. So we won't sew it here or here. Make sure you back stitch right where that mark is and um, at the bottom corner as well. So make sure you have the side where you made the markings on top so that's visible so I'll start stitching from that mark there. So I've just lined up the right edge of my fabric with the 5 8 mark on the sewing machine and I'm starting right where I placed that pencil mark. Do a couple stitches then back stitch a couple stitches then keep sewing So the next thing I want to do is press the seam allowance open on both sides. So that includes the area that is above where we stop stitching. Just press that open um, at 5 eighths of an inch. So I'm going to take my raw edge here and I'm going to turn it under so that this seam is pressed in half like that, you see, and then come in with the iron and press it again. There we go. 
Now I'm going to repeat on the other side seam here. So I'm going to be stitching right along this folded edge here on all four edges of the seam allowance. So on this side, on this side, and then on the other side as well. So now I'm going to be stitching the folded edge of the seam allowance to the exterior of the bag. And I find that this is a little bit easier to do with the bag right side out. That way I can make sure that I'm not accidentally catching the other side of the bag as I stitch down this seam allowance. Once you've stitched down those four seam allowances, you should have visible stitching from the outside of your bag and your seam allowances should be completely enclosed on the inside. So now what we're going to do is stitch across the bottom of the bag here. Now normally you, when you're stitching, you always do it right sides together. But when we do a French seam, we actually start by doing a stitch with the right sides out and it's wrong sides together. So this may seem a little backwards, but it will work out in the end to create a beautifully enclosed seam. So go ahead and pin along the bottom edge of your bag. So I am going to stitch along this bottom edge at one quarter of an inch. The reason I'm doing one quarter of an inch is because first we'll stitch it at one quarter of an inch then we'll flip it around and stitch it at 3 eighths of an inch. When you add 1 quarter of an inch to 3 eighths of an inch, you get your seam allowance of 5 eighths of an inch. That is how you do a French seam. You always want, when you're doing a French seam, your two seam allowances to add up to the seam allowance that your pattern specifies. It doesn't matter too much with something like a bag, like this. Um, where the size isn't particularly important, but it does matter a lot if you're making a garment or something else where the, where the size is really particular. So now I'll stitch that bottom edge at one quarter of an inch, then trim it down in half so there's only about an eighth of an inch left, turn the bag wrong side out, and press that as flat as you can along the bottom edge. Now we're going to stitch again with the bag right sides together at 3 eighths of an inch. And there you go, that's how you create a French seam. So to box out my corner, I am going to pull the front and the back apart, just like this, near one of my bottom corners. Then I'm gonna line up this center seam along the side with this line of stitching here. I am going to use a ruler and mark over, let's say mark over about an inch right there. I'm going to make a mark an inch from the edge and on the other side I'll do the same thing. And then come on with your ruler and make a line across that corner. It's about two inches long. So I'll do it here, and then I'll do it here. So I always like to box out my corners because it gives the bags a little bit of a bottom so that they have something to rest on. Now I'm just gonna stitch right where I've stitched, um, right where I've placed these pencil marks. Now we just need to create our drawstring channels. So first I'm going to just press down the top edge of each side at about a quarter of an inch. Then you're going to press it down a second time at about five eighths of an inch. You want that bottom folded edge of the channel to be just below where we stop stitching on the side seams. 
right there. If you can fit your bag over the end of your ironing board like this, it's a little bit easier to press that channel down. Now I'm just going to stitch down that drawstring channel by stitching all the way around the bag near where that bottom folded edge of the channel is. And I like to do this with the free arm of my sewing machine, so I just take off that accessory table and then I stitch all the way around the bag, remembering to backstitch at the beginning and the end. And the last step is just to put our drawstrings in the bag. First, you're going to cut two pieces of ribbon that are a couple inches longer than twice the width of your bag. And then you're going to take one ribbon and start feeding it through the channel with the safety pin attached to one end and you're going to go in and go all the way around the bag until you are back where you started then you're going to do the same thing with your other ribbon this time starting from the other side of the bag then when you pull on the ribbons the bag should nicely cinch itself and there you go that's all there is to it so there is the finished project. I hope you give this project a try. I think it's really easy, doesn't take much fabric, but you get to try out some different techniques that you may not have tried before. I also think you can't have too many drawstring bags for organizing your supplies. Happy sewing!